at the core i we will always be merchant first if it is not adding value to the merchant at the core of it i will not do it but 20% of our business going forward will also be consumer but that will be consumer credit or buy now pay later so our buy now pay later product is post pay uh, and it's extremely differentiated it's the only product through which you can actually use credit to pay on a qr right so think about the way i think about the product is pretty simple why are you able to buy an iphone on credit but why are you not able to pay for your gold cup on credit in fact uh, a gold cup as a transaction is much less riskier than someone buying an iphone which is going beyond his regular means and regular income right so the whole idea with postpay is we want to power everyday transactions to credit and end of the month give an option to the consumer if he wants to pay in full enjoy that one month credit if you want to uh, fund it and say you want you know let's say end of the month you have a 50000 rupees total spend and you want to pay it out in 6 months just pay me like uh, uh, you know 9000 rupees every month and just pay pay that 50000 out over 6 months when you are spending you should not be thinking of oh how am i going to fund it or should should i convert into an emi on the machine itself right now i think that's a very suboptimal behavior right 80% of our business the core will remain merchant lending and much bigger merchant lending much deeper merchant lending but we are also going to do auto loans we are going to do home loans because i i understand the merchant i understand his needs i mean his cash flow i have an ability to collect so i will not only restrict myself to business loans and on 20% of the business as i told you will be uh, buy now pay later uh, uh, which will be post pay so we will have a merchant app which is bharat pay and a consumer app which will post pay 80 20 ratio and i think from here in the next 4 years we should at least grow uh, you know on an overall company basis 10x Unity Small Finance Bank, which we have created along with Centrum, it's a it's a almost a 50-50 JV. It's 51-49. So we have 49 percent liquidity. They're 51 percent. What we do as a business at Bharat Pay continues as it is, to the extent we can help Unity Small Finance Bank become much bigger by also enabling them within our app. Of course, we will do that. But our lending business continues uh, 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 will con- continue to flourish within. within the bharat pay fold the parts of the lending business which uh, uh, are dearest enough for the bank to fund this will get funded by the bank uh, if you step back and look at us right uh, in a few months years time we would have in to anyone look like a bank and, and a tech enabled bank now one thing i have figured is everyone has today calling themselves started calling themselves a bank right but the sad part is no one has a banking license and genuinely to build something at a very different scale you need to have that underlying license i was very clear that we would eventually have to become a bank now it's for me it's come because of the pmc opportunity that license has come maybe a 5 to 10 years earlier than it would have in, in the normal course and of course i'm going to use this 5 to 10 years time that i've earned to create significant leadership for us in the digital banking space year one and a half year down the line unity small finance bank will be a very different digital banking experience than any other traditional bank in the market or anyone claiming to be a neo bank as well traditionally we have been a savings economy and i can tell you there are two extremes of it you have a economy like japan which is high on savings which has also done well and on the other extreme you have a economy like the us which is high on consumer behavior and consumption the way i think about it is you have to be responsible as a lender on how much are you underwriting the person for so now if you're underwriting an individual for much more than his ability to repay you as a lender have to be responsible the consumer will do what he has to do right i don't believe that uh, a consumer in the us is in a debt trap some of the most leveraged consumers you'll find is in the us but look at the way the economy has grown my fundamental belief is if you're saying you're a 2 trillion trillion dollar economy and if your aim is to become a 5 trillion dollar economy the path to that is through easier access to credit both at a business level and at a consumer level so we have to stop demonizing credit for a company of our size 
uh, and the level of volumes and value of transactions that we deal level of lending that we deal with right we probably have and and previously also had the smallest tech team i believe in quality of tech we do 55 lakh transactions a day no amount of number of people i put behind that can solve that problem and because i had the right tech i could even scale up to the level we have scaled up so my uh, fundamental view is get extremely good quality engineers give them the best of problems to solve give them good salaries give them market leading uh, equity ownership and what they will be able to build will be much better than having 500 techies which are average and uh, when you have to attract the best of talent then you also have to be uh, much ahead of the market my fundamental view is and i am an engineer myself i went to iit delhi everyone who is an engineer has a fantasy of two things a beautiful girlfriend and a bike i can't get you the girlfriend but i can get you a bike which can get you the girlfriend i simply said market is becoming competitive how do we differentiate ourselves how do we attract talent and you know what is the first thing a techie loves right and if if that's a bike and i'm be giving a bmw bike so be it I think see the IPO market has gone sour. I like to listen to the market. I'm very keen to understand what the market is saying. My understanding is that where you have monopoly or duopoly, the market is willing to give a premium. So if you look at Nike, they got a good premium. Nike is the only big player in this space. There's maybe there's another Purple, but which is much smaller. If you look at Zomato, it is just Zomato and Swiggy. So where your duopoly or monopoly is well established. there the market is willing to give you a premium where your differentiation from other players is not established that's where the struggle is right so let's say policy bits policy bazaar is again fintech they came out they it's differentiated right they know they only do one thing which is sell insurance and they do it well uh, they might be using tech they might not be using tech they might be using a bit more of call center all said and done they make money right so it's a the market gave a premium for that the moment you are coming up and saying oh i am very big but there is no differentiation that's where the market doesn't seem to be rewarding right so for example if you look at paytm now paytm can say oh i do everything i also am a, a bharat pay i am also a, a phone pay i am also a policy bazaar i am also a gaming company when you say i am everything for everyone that's where the market starts discounting you if you overvalue yourself you are setting yourself up for failure you should as a company be always undervalued even today in today's market right for the amount of business that we do for the amount of network effect we have built uh, we are seriously undervalued against any comparable company right you know there are people who are going and you know valuing themselves at 6 billion 7 billion 8 billion now right which are our peer groups and we are saying no we are very happy in the last round we were valued at 2.8 we we are in no rush to get to the bigger number already was we'll solve for the fundamentals no see uh, valuation is a trap uh, it's a notional number it's not money in the bank what you have as money in the bank is the real thing my fundamental belief is and where a lot of founders flounder right uh, or start floundering is they start thinking of valuation as a parameter of success it's a quantification of their success at some level it's extremely wrong i always keep telling people undervalue 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 keep a buffer keep money on the table right there is no point in optimization on value look for peep, people who have leadership in their space if you believe that best product in the market is also the one taking out an ipo uh, or if you have seen that in play in the market and you believe it's a good product then put money into it second don't go by size the most highest returns ipos are the smaller ones the bigger the ipo amount it's in all probability means high valuation in in the first place most important thing there is primary and there is secondary primary is when the ipo is happening and the money is going to come into the company so the company is going to get stronger which will have so much cash to build more business secondary is when someone who is an existing shareholder it might be promoter or it might be early investors are selling their stock 
keep away from the secondary stocks and the fourth thing i will add is be smart by applying on first day it's not first come first serve in retail segment if it's oversubscribed it always lottery based or proportionate right if it's not that much oversubscribed there's no points for applying on the first day all hnis all institutional investors apply in the last 2 hours of the ipo right wait to see what's happening in the in, in the why are you taking the two day additional risk right it's not worth it